expect the transformation of a lifetime. There's something really interesting and one of a kind about these. You made a very good profit. Get hooked on home and living tonight on TLC. The Quids are about to be five years old. Things started out normal. They're so expressive now. They're not little babies anymore. It's like, ah. But then it all took a turn. Five around. We're stuck at home just like you. This is very different setup. What are we going to do inside with six restless girls? Stop. We can handle it, but you never know what tomorrow brings. Outdoors, Bernie's 17th September on TLC. You can dare to dare. I want to be naked. <laughs> Feel the urge to splurge. This one's 32,600. Make grown men cry. I'm just so happy. Because every attraction. I had an instant feeling that it was the one. There's something about the it that is calling call. me. Deserves a reaction. Are you saying yes to the dress? Yes. 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 <laughs> Say yes to the dress. Fridays on TLC. Bakers love disguising cake into seemingly inedible objects. These dessert imposters look so real, it's hard to believe you can actually eat them. Amazing cake artist Mike McCary specializes in unique and unexpected designs. He's putting a sweet spin on an old-school arcade game. My name is Mike McCary. I own Mike's Amazing Cakes in Seattle, Washington. Our clients have come to expect something unusual, something animated, something fun. The non-traditionalists seek us out. So today, we are making a cake for the anniversary party for the Seattle Pinball Museum. Wouldn't it be cool if they could play the cake? Right? Oh, that would be really cool. I'm making a pinball machine. It'll be layers of cake layered up with our buttercream. That's the base, bottom part of it, and then the upper part of the game. But there's also be layers of cake and buttercream. They wanted a Pacific Northwest theme, so we're doing salmon. But I want to make it interactive. I'm making this so they can play the cake. It's one thing to eat your cake. Oh, can somebody get a look on that? New. Let's do that. Thanks yeah, for well. playing the game. Yes, sir. I'm looking at the game. It's very important. The game dictates exactly how big the cake will be. 14 to 18 inches long would be good. That's what's giving me my lead in terms of shape and design. And now we're ready for cake. They want something nostalgic, and I want to give them a nostalgic flavor. So we're going to go with a vanilla cake that has a buttercream filling, and it'll be flavored with pureed orange and orange and peach schnapp. It reminds everybody of a creamsicle that we all had as kids. So I put a layer of cake, put a layer of buttercream, cake, buttercream working my way up. Then I hold the panels on either side. Melana comes through with a much longer straighter knife and she cuts down the top angle based on those patterns I have. The first thing I gotta do is I have to put, slip the game down and put it in place. Great idea. Once I get it down, then it's a matter of, okay, now that it's all in place, does it work? So I go off from the magical moment where I hit the button. So, all right. Ah, big sigh of relief for me. These large mauling chocolate panels that I'm putting on the base, they're big. I'm going to line it right up to the edge. Now we're going to build the cake for the top part or the backboard. The most challenging part of something like this, of course, is the backboard. My concern is keeping the cake in there and it meeting up with the other cake properly. It's going from being horizontal to vertical, and I'm worried about the cake coming out of it. If they give it a shove to make sure it's not going to want to slide on me like that. This is my rolled out modeling chocolate. It's cold now, so it's much stiffer. All right, let's see how this is going to go. Don't let it come forward. Okay. Yay! On any pinball machine, the graphics are what attract a person to play. They need to make a banner that says the name of our game, which we're calling Salmon Spawn. I'm going with a salmon theme because it's the Pacific Northwest. And the idea is that the ball goes upstream just like the salmon. I want it to be retro. So I want it kind of a 60s, early 1970s. Oh, no, no. Okay, ah. I've got all the graphics made, so scan all that. So once we're happy with the graphics, Teresa will then go ahead and dedicate them and print them on edible paper. I got all your artwork done. Hold it, hold it. And then I can cut those out and place those onto the machine. It doesn't keep score, but you can play all day. And when you're done, you can eat it. The last thing we're doing is we're flipping that backboard in place. Slowly. Yep, right there. That's it. Cake's all done. I feel great. I am very excited to see how will it look amongst the other pinball machines and how they're going to react to this. Hey, guys. Oh, my God.
It's a pinball game you can play. Are you kidding me? Oh. <laughs> I won. One of those odd experiences where it's a cake and delivering it and everybody's happy and they're eating it. This was beyond that. Oh my God. This is so good. Because they could play it. It had an emotional impact for the people that it was for. Couldn't be any happier. Dito ng dawe kung microphone. Incorporating 
wine. All right. All right. And at the end of the round, one of you is going to be eliminated. 45 minutes on the clock. Let's go. Woo! Whoa. Out of my way. So upside down cake. Mm -hmm. It's baked in a single pan. You have the fruit underneath. Flip it, and then you have the sponge. Then you flip it. Yes. And pull off the pan, and there's beautiful fruity goodness underneath. The bottom becomes the top. It's so versatile. Do not want to spill this. Pineapples are like the typical place that you go when you think of an upside down cake. The classic. Yeah. But what I'm interested in is that caramelly, syrupy bottom that becomes the top. And so I think important. that wine, especially like the sangria or even that wine cooler, might be a really fun place to make that syrup happen. The baker might be clever enough to just strain that fruit out of the sangria and start using that. And that's actually got the alcohol infused into it. Does it need fruit on top? Is that a requirement for you? No. The baker might think about candied nuts, whatever yes. else, in the pan first, and then the batter poured over it and baked. Sign me up. How about an upside down cake with chocolate? Because chocolate and red wine together actually makes quite a nice cake. Oh, yeah, it's a classic American dessert. I need to see it. Yeah, I need to feel it. I agree. I'm ready. Let's get going here. My style of baking is Italian. I grew up in a big Italian family. I learned a lot of my baking from my father and my mother, and hopefully it'll help me to win. Here we go. When I hear the challenge is upside down, can immediately fix pop into my head. Round one, I'm making a fig ragatta upside down cake. The ragatta lightens the cake so it's not too dense. Upside down, turn me upside down cake. I love an olive oil cake. I love that. It's a classic approach. It does lend to me a more smooth, tender batter, if you will. I'm adding Chardonnay into the cake, hoping it just gives that fruity flavor. All right, thanks. Don't do me wrong. This dish is going to be an homage to my dad. My father grew figs right in our yard. We would go and pick them. We would eat them right off the tree. I think my dad would be very proud that I would be making this dish, the regatta cake. He would just be like, I taught you well. Oh, mio, San Fran da te, oh, mio. What are you thinking about his fig, ricotta, olive oil, cake? I love the ratio of fruit, a thin layer of figs with that sugar that's going to caramelize. To me, Angelo is on the track to Bakerville. All right. We're going in the oven. I just want to like, drink this whole pitcher. My baking style is high in craveability. You're at the club, you know, you're dancing to some reggaeton, you come home, and you're craving something sweet, and that's where I come in. Let's do this. I feel pretty good about making an upside down cake with wine, because the sangria already has apples marinating in it. So for round one, I'm making apple sangria upside down cake. Just a little more, you can never have enough sangria. The first thing that I'm gonna get started on is my sangria reduction. I got the sangria and the cornstarch. Because we're on a time crunch here, I'm gonna make a cornstarch slurry to thicken the mixture. A slurry is equal parts of liquid and a cornstarch. I'm getting it real ooey gooey. Ali is reducing down his sangria. I'm just worried about the viscosity of it, to be honest with you. You do get a totally different thickening from a cornstarch than you do from reduction. A cornstarch also gives that kind of gluey, unnatural, like overly thickened, like pie filling. And, and in this case, with upside down, you want more of a glaze. Beautiful. When my sangria is reducing, I'm going to get started on my apple cake. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. The apples from the sangria are going to serve as my fruit layer for my upside down cake. You need a beat, Ali? You dancing a over there? Inks, 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 inks. I'm from New Jersey. My mother contracted polio when she was four years old. So I've always had this mindset that baking doesn't discriminate. When you get into the kitchen, you forget about your problems, you forget about your disability or whatever, and you just bake. If my mom can overcome adversity, there's no doubt in my mind that I can win this competition for her. You gotta have fun while you're baking. I'm putting a little sangria in my apple cake to kind of bring out more of the flavor of the fruit. Oh my God, Ali is over mixing that batter. Once you add flour to a batter, that gluten goes to work. But you don't want to work it out too much. You're gonna end up with a really tough cake. That's a faker move. Beautiful. I am throwing some of the sangria reduction over it with a little bit of brown sugar, putting the batter over it and popping them in the oven. We are going in. Courtney, that wedding ring is fabulous. Thank you very much.
I would probably classify myself as a country girl. I like trucks and sweet tea on the front porch, and I love overalls. Wish I had them on right now. Upside down cake. Most of them always have fruit in them, but for this challenge, I want to do something a little bit different. So for round one, I'm making a chocolate pecan upside down wacky cake. A wacky cake is just a southern chocolate cake. It's eggless and just makes it really gooey and moist and delicious. And I know I can turn it into a great upside down cake. The first thing I want to get started on is my upside down topping. Got some good chunks. I have some really close ties to pecans. My husband's family produces them, so we always have lots of good southern Texas pecans. Let's get three cups of flour in there. After I have my topping together, I'm going to start the cake batter. Merlot, Merlot, Merlot. I'm going with Merlot because I don't think it will add any additional sweetness to the wacky cake. Also, Merlot pairs very well with chocolate. I like that Courtney is using a combination of cocoa powder in her batter, and she's pairing that with the Merlot. With the red wine is a baker combination. No faker is going to know how nice and subtle that combo can be. And into convection. We're skating the baby already. <laughs> Make a snack baker win. <laughs> I would describe myself as very upbeat, loving, passionate about life. All right, let's fire it up. But when I'm baking, I'm a beast. <laughs> I was born. The first thing I do is I begin to caramelize that pineapple in brown sugar and in butter. Woo! Hey, Nikki! Hi! How are you? This is looking good! Yes. Which alcohol are you using? I'm using the pina colada wine cooler. Wow! Making magic in the kitchen. Nikki, getting the caramelization in the pan with the pineapples. And the blue wine cooler. I mean... First of all, she knows limited time. I don't know if the oven's going to caramelize my pineapples. So let's get it done on the stovetop before I get it into the pan. I feel like it's a total baker move. Pineapples are looking good. Now that I have the pineapple topping done, I'm beginning to work on my cake batter. And it's a coconut. What I really love about Nikki is she wants to build some texture, some flavor, and by toasting the coconut, you're getting both. You're getting nice nuttiness, and then the texture is nice. I love a good coconut, too. <laughs> I want to transport the judges to a nice sandy beach, and there you go with your pina colada pineapple upside down cake. Got this. I forgot to oil my pan. My upside down cakes are baking, and I remember I forgot to spray the pans. You forgot to oil your pan? Yes. Oh, baker move. Baker, baker, baker. Baker move, for sure. Without cooking spray, these cakes are not going to come out. <laughs> Everything is going to stick. You forgot to oil your pan? Yes. Oh, baker move. Down cake has to be flipped over, it has to come out clean, and I've got to start this whole thing over. Freaking out a lot! Courtney's making backup cakes. Backup cakes. And we all know that is exactly what a baker does. A baker would not do that. I grab more springform pans, make sure this time they're sprayed with cooking spray. Get the topping in, get the batter in. Oh, I hope that my second batch of wacky cake cooks in time. All right. Now that my big cakes are in the oven, I start my mascarpone whipped cream. When you add cheese like a mascarpone, it gives it that rich, creamy texture. It can really, really elevate the whipped cream. Getting the heavy cream in. I absolutely love that Angelo is whipping cream and mascarpone together. I think the cream is very neutral and the mascarpone is a little bit sweet. I think the combination is going to be really good. And that's a baker move. I'm going to make a little wine sauce. Next, I start my red wine reduction. I decided that I wanted to use more than one wine just to show that I have skills. I put about a cup and a half of red wine, a cup and a half of sugar. I choose to incorporate the cocoa powder, thinking that chocolate pairs well with figs. Come on, baby. I just don't get why Angelo's not using chocolate that's got the fat in it, maybe some milk chocolate even. To use the cocoa, it's bitter. It can be grainy and chalky at times if not cooked properly. Feels like bigger. Come on, baby. 
The biggest renovation show in history is now on GLC. Armies of volunteers working countless hours. Lives will change. Extreme Makeover Home Edition, Mondays on TLC. Engage in a battle of wits. And test your intellect. At Discovery's first ever online quiz night. If you have trivia fever, what are you waiting for? Get into cyberspace. Queen must You better be ready. With fellow online brainiacs, do you have what it takes to outsmart everyone else? Discovery Online Quiz Night. In partnership with Sky. Made possible with Axe Body Spray. Special thanks to Duncan and Panasonic Air Conditioners. Okay, it's showtime. This is our home, the place where I eat, oh, yeah. yeah, sleep, and breathe food. This smells so good. So good, doesn't even make sense. <laughs> this is our new addition. And who knows, maybe Bernie will grow up to be a farmer. Hopefully a food blogger, but maybe a farmer. The hardest part is knowing when to stop. Could this get any better? No. Girl Meets Bomb, for May's 15th September on TLC. Let's do this. I got my cakes in the oven, and now I want to incorporate something that's sweet and salty. So why not candied walnuts? I'm going to throw them into a sugar and a little bit of cinnamon coating, and then I'm going to flatten them out on a baking sheet and throw them in the oven. Ellie has tossed the nuts in egg whites so we can spread them on a tray and bake them off. And egg whites create the most delicious sugar shell. It's a shine, too, but that's a grandma trick. He knows. He hangs out with grandma. Even though he's a faker, that looks gorgeous. We are going in. Woo! I've got my cakes baking, so now I need to start working on my whipped cream. I need my buttermilk. The first thing that I add to the mixer is heavy cream and buttermilk. I love that Courtney is very creative with putting buttermilk in her whipped cream to give it a tart milk. That's a baker move. Okay, sugar. I'm going to add my sugar, and I'm just going to add a little bit because I really want this whipped cream to keep that tart flavor. And this is just about perfect. That's going to offset the super sweet of the wacky cake. This dish is for my son. He tells me I'm the world's greatest baker. My son wants Mama to come home with a trophy. I don't think there's a trophy, but he doesn't know that. I'm testing my cakes, and thank goodness I see that the one that I sprayed is done. Hot! I'm just not going to have that much time to cool them. i got to start taking them out of the springform pans. Come on, baby. Oh, no! Now that my cakes are in the oven, I'm getting started on my coconut brittle. It is absolutely delicious and fun to make. The first thing I do is I take my sugar, I take my corn syrup, and I take a little bit of water, and I put it in my saucepan. All right, it's coming together, baby. I love what Nikki's doing with the coconut. I love the fact she's giving us a brittle. She's really thinking texture. It's a win. That's a baking move. I'm a little bit worried. It doesn't look like Nikki's cooking her sugar long enough, and I'm scared that's going to end up being kind of a soft brittle mm -hmm. instead of crackly and crunchy. Make some magic. I already have my toasted coconut laid out with my chopped up dried pineapples as well as my pecan, and I pour that caramel over top to really set that brittle. Then I take my brittle and I put it in the flash freezer just to try to chill it a bit. Oh, really 100 million yuan! I love it! My beautiful daughters, Malia and Madison. For me to win as a mom, it would just really show them that anything is possible. And I want them to be as proud of me as I am. Two minutes! Two minutes! Get that food on the plate! I'm ready to win $10,000 today. Come on, baby. 
Connie, who are you two bakers? My bakers are Courtney and Nikki. Nikki, she is our baker. I love the brittle with the coconut and the wine cooler for flavor profiles. Wow. Idea. It's creative, but it's something. Next. And Courtney wow. over here, I like what she's doing, making a backup cake. Like I also like the idea that she read Lorraine's mind and she's giving us that chocolate Merlot moment. It's going to be delicious. I can't wait to taste it. Angelo and Courtney are my bakers. I think Courtney using cocoa powder and red wine. That's a real baker to me. Cocoa powder in the batter to make the chocolate cake. It still passes for upside down cake. Brings the red wine to the conversation while still being unusual. Angelo, I just like his strategy. I think the combination of fresh figs and ricotta is such a beautiful combo and it's so smart with wine. My two bakers are Nikki and Ali because Ali is the only one who went for the sangria. He pulled out that fruit. He's making the reduction. To me, that says baker. I love what Nikki's doing with the coconut. She's going for the texture and she's giving us brittle. And pina colada upside down cake, it's a win. That's a baker move. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six. judging i'm feeling pretty confident i mean my dish out of all the dishes looks the best and i know that it tastes good so i'm just hoping that the judges think the same bakers and fakers i gave you 45 minutes to make upside down cake using wine now it's time to face the judges remember whoever's made the judges favorite dish will win the round whoever's made the judges least favorite dish will be going home Courtney, what did you make? I made a chocolate pecan upside down wacky cake. I used Merlot and I used it in the cake base. I like the sort of lick the batter out of the bowl energy that this upside down cake has. I love the use of the wine and the cocoa powder with the nuts. I think that was really creative. I actually get that acidity from the wine and I think it's really to me is so creamy, delicious. You need something to kind of lift it up, brighten up the note a little bit. That being said, I'm a sucker for nuts. They're crunchy. They kind of toast it in the oven. Ali, what have you made for us today? Today I prepared for you an apple sangria upside down cake. I used the sangria in a reduction and I also incorporated some of the sangria into the cake batter as well. I was worried about the slurry with the cornstarch, but I really do love that red wine glaze that you made. It's so wine forward and delicious. I also love your candy nuts. They're perfect. But I feel like the cake is so dense. It's super dense. The cake, it's nice the way it takes a back seat to the other flavors. And that left you room for the sangria and the fruit. I don't like the cornstarch slurry that you use in the sangria. I think you clouded it up. If you just trusted yourself and just reduce the sangria with a little pinch of sugar and we're really cooking with gas. Okay, it's showtime. This is our home, the place where I eat, sleep, and breathe food. This smells so good. So good. This is our new addition. And who knows, maybe Bernie will grow up to be a farmer. Hopefully a food blogger, but maybe a farmer. The hardest part is knowing when to stop. I just get any better. Girl Meets Bomb. Premiers 15 September on GLC. Engage in a battle of wits and test your intellect. Actually, a little chemical trick of the month at Discovery's first ever online quiz night. If you have trivia fever, what are you waiting for? Head into cyberspace and battle it out. You better be ready. With fellow online brainiacs. Do you have what it takes to outsmart everyone else? Discovery on Wednesday night. In partnership with Sky. Made possible with Axe Body Spray. Special thanks to Duncan and Panasonic Air Conditioners.
You can dare to bear. I want to be naked. <laughs> Feel the urge to splurge. This one's 32,600. Make grown men cry. I'm just so happy. Because every attraction... I had an instant feeling that it was the one. There's something about it that's calling me. Deserves a reaction. Are you saying yes to the dress? Yes! 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 <laughs> Say yes to the dress. Fridays on TLC. Yes. What have you made for us today? I made for you a fake ragatta upside down cake. I used the Chardonnay in the cake batter itself. And I also made a red wine reduction. I think the cake is awesome. I love an olive oil cake. It's a bit smoother on the tongue. I love the whipped cream. Just comes in and brings it all together. The Chardonnay is showing up right at the very end. It's a really nice end note. I was like super excited about you doing the red wine reduction with the chocolate, but I think it's on the edge of too bitter. I definitely know there's wine in this cake. The texture of the ricotta with the seeds of the figs on top, and then I have this whipped cream with mascarpone that to me makes me want to eat this whole thing. It's also just perfectly unsweetened. The cocoa does you no service here. This is an editing mistake that could cost you 10,000 bucks. Edit. Nikki, what did you make? I made a pina colada upside down cake. I put the wine cooler in the pineapples. Well, this is delicious. I think the cake is so spongy and light and moist. I really love the toasted coconut caramelization. And the brittle could have been a little bit more caramelized to cook down a higher temperature. I like the brittle, actually. Really? Yeah, I like that you're almost going to get a cavity eating this. <laughs> got an almost cornmeal or cornbread texture from your cake with the coconut, which is really successful. Your use of the wine cooler, I don't particularly taste it. I get the sense that there's alcohol layered in here somewhere. Thank you, everyone. The judges have got a lot to think about. So excuse us. At this point, I'm kind of regretting adding that cocoa powder into my sauce. I'm just hoping that the other flavors of the fig upside down cake will pull me through. Fakers and fakers, I gave you 45 minutes to make upside down cake using wine. You've already faced the judges. Now it's time to learn who won the round and who lost the round and is going home. And we'll also learn that person's true identity. The winner of this round is... Nikki. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Nikki, we found you one because you created such a wonderful caramelized top by combining sugar, coconut, and the pineapple. I and mean, we love that you use a wine cooler. Very fun. It was a real home run. Yeah, I'll give it to you. Whew. Our second favorite dish was made by. Good job, Courtney. Thank you. The person moving on to round two is Angelo. Unfortunately, Ali, that means you've been eliminated. But before you go, please tell us, are you a baker or are you a faker? I am a baker. Wow! Come on, I knew you were the only one who said he was a baker. Where are you a baker? I own the Cookie Connect. It's a late night cookie delivery service. Hey, I have a delivery. The business started with my mom and my friends. We have all these crazy recipes. I went to school for IT, and I coded an app, tap the cookies that you want, and within 45 minutes, you have them to your house, dorm room, or apartment, freshly baked. And it kind of just took off. Well, this one's nice and gooey. Some of my fondest memories growing up are in the kitchen around Christmas time, baking Christmas cookies with my mom, which is where my love for cookies originated from. Thank you, Ali. Thank you guys so much. Yeah. Welcome to the money round, everyone. Woo! <laughs> so we know that we've got one baker and two fakers remaining. Fake, baker. And in this round, you've got the freedom to make whatever dish you like. However, you must incorporate... Seeds. 
kind of seeds. What do we got there? All right, so we've got poppy seeds, sunflower seeds, black sesame paste, candied fennel seeds, 